In 2 Chronicles chapter 2, look at verse number 4. This is where Solomon was talking about the temple and building a temple for God, you know, a house for the Lord. Look at verse number 4. The Bible reads, Behold, I build a house to the name of the Lord my God to dedicate it to him and to burn before him sweet incense and for the continual showbread and for the burnt offerings morning and evening on the Sabbaths and on the new moons and on the solemn feasts of the Lord our God. This is an ordinance forever to Israel. And the house which I build is great, for great is our God above all gods. Louis says in verse 6, but who is able to build him a house? He said, God is great. God is above all God. God is just, just huge. He's great. But who's able to build him a house, seeing the heaven and heaven of heavens cannot contain him? That God can't be contained even by, because think about it, if God created a space, if God created heaven, how is that going to be able to contain him? God is bigger than everything he created. He says that can't contain him. Who am I then that I should build him a house save only to burn sacrifice before him? So he's explaining because, you know, he built this temple. It's supposed to be the house of the Lord and it's a holy place and everything else. But it, he's still recognizing you know, even though we built this house, the point is really just to be able to burn sacrifices and have a place where we can do these things and, and offer up God these burnt sacrifices and offerings because ultimately God is not going to be just completely contained just in that little space. God doesn't need a house. You know, God doesn't need anything from us. God is the one who gives everything. He gives life. He's created everything. He doesn't need that from us. And the heaven, even the heaven of heavens, cannot contain him. Um, turn, if you would, please, to Psalm 193. Or excuse me, Psalm 139, not 193. Getting dyslexic this morning. Psalm 139. I'm going to read it for you from Jeremiah 23. Jeremiah 23, verse 23, the Bible reads, Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? So he's saying, am I just a God that's just like at hand, meaning like real close right here, but not a God that's also far off and far away and could see from afar? Verse 24 says, can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? So can anybody just find a hiding place anywhere and I'm not going to be able to see him? I'm not going to be able to know where he is. Said the Lord says, do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. So God's saying, I fill heaven and earth. How can you go anywhere and be away from God? He fills heaven and earth. God is everywhere. You can't hide from God. And people who foolishly want to try to get away from the presence of God, you can't. You can't do it. Just like jo uh, Jonah. You know, Jonah was told to do so. He was told to go preach in Nineveh. And what did he do? He tried to flee. He tried to get away from God. Well, what a foolish thing to do. He's on a boat in the middle of the sea. And guess what? God was there. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He go in the opposite direction where he's supposed to be going. But God was still there. You cannot get away from God. And you know, this also debunks this false teaching that hell is separation from God. Hell is not separation from God. Because do, you know, do you know what the Bible says about people who are in hell that are suffering and being tortured and tormented? The Bible says it's in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb in the book of Revelation. Is that God is actually there. God is the one pouring out His wrath and His fury in hell right now on souls that are burning and, and tortured there. The only degree of separation that I accept when He's saying hell is separation from God is that they're separated in any type of good relationship with God. That's true, because they're at the receiving end of his wrath and fury. But it's not like they're physically separated from God at all, because no one is. And, and see, this is, this is the nonsense that people who want to tone down hell and twist and pervert the truth of God the truth of the Bible, what the Bible actually says, that want to make, you know, some parts of the Bible seem not so bad. And why do they do that? Because then they could get more people 
and get more people putting money in the offering plate because they're not offending anybody. Because the fact of the matter is, some pe there's a lot of people out there that don't want to hear about hell. They don't want to know about it. They'd rather bury their heads in the sand than be told the truth or hear the truth that there is a place of eternal judgment and, and torture and torment and some people don't want to believe that there is a God that would do such a thing. But my friends, the fact of the matter is, he's real. And that is what the Bible describes about him, that there is a place called hell. It's a real place. And there's a God that created that place that's going to be sending people to hell, which is the whole reason why we go out and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the whole reason why Jesus Christ came to this earth and shed his blood and died on the cross and rose again from the dead was to pay for our sins so that we don't have to go to that place. That is why. It's the whole point. Because it's real. It's not just separation from God. The people try to tell you that, oh, see, it's just like torture to be separated from God and God's way over there and you're way over here and, and you just wish and yearn and long that you could be with God and that is hell. That's a bunch of nonsense. That foolishness would tell you that the people who on this earth want to have nothing to do with God, that somehow that's hell for them to then be separated from God, who they want to be separated from right now. To them, that's heaven. Yep. To have no rules, to have no authority, to have nobody to answer to, that's heaven for them. That's not hell. No, hell is a real place. And the people that don't want to have anything to do with God, they're going to go there.